So here we are with the brand new Mercedes C-Class and it's been designed to offer similar luxury, technology and comfort as its bigger brother, the S-Class. But does it? It certainly looks like a mini S-Class. The swooping lines combine with shiny bits of trim to create a car that mixes effortless elegance with contemporary cool. And if you like the outside, you'll love the inside. The new C-Class's cabin really is top notch. The black piano trim contrasts beautifully with the silver air vents, while the metal buttons on the center console and the window and door switches really add an air of quality. This car doesn't only look good though, it's also very good to touch. That's because all the materials, they just feel so expensive and normally manufacturers will scrimp on the plastics that you don't see. But let's say you were to scratch your ankle and brush against the materials down there, you know, they feel good too. While you're down there, you'll also notice the large side door bins. And they are good in the back too. In fact, the C-Class beats its rivals for interior cubby spaces. The C-Class is very well equipped. As standard, you get all the usual stuff you'd expect on this kind of car, such as DAB digital radio. You also have climate control. There's cruise control. There's Bluetooth for your mobile phone. But you also get a reversing camera as standard, which is really handy because while the rear window is very big, you still have no idea where the tailgate is. All cars also get two screens. There's one here between the dials, which is very clear, by the way, for the driver. There's also a central screen there. And all but the entry-level model gets satellite navigation as standard. Now, I should point out that this screen is actually the upgraded version. The standard one is a bit smaller. Speaking of options, you can get various packs which add things like electric seats, electric steering column. There we go, because you shouldn't have to do anything manually in a Mercedes and this rather nice double sunroof. The C-Class also gets a raft of safety kit. Seven airbags come as standard, as does anti-skid control and attention assist, which will warn you if it thinks you're falling asleep behind the wheel. There's also a system which alerts you if it thinks a collision is imminent. On the options list, you can get stuff like lane keeping assist, which will prevent you weaving out of your lane. There's also adaptive cruise control, which will keep you a safe distance from the car in front. All this helped the C-Class score the maximum five-star Euro NCAP safety rating. And if it's reliability you're interested in, then Mercedes came in the top 10 of the 2014 Driver Power Owner Satisfaction Survey. When it comes to keeping you comfortable on a long distance commute, this C-Class, in my book, is the most comfy car to travel in. It's just so relaxing to drive. Part of the reason for that is just how quiet it is. I mean, we are driving on a really rough surface and in other cars it'd be very loud, but if you listen, there's hardly any tire noise at all. You also get almost no wind noise, even at really high speeds. All you get is a slight little fluttering sound just up there on the A-pillar, but overall, this is a superbly quiet car to travel in. It helps that the suspension is nice and soft. Don't worry though, it's not so soft that the C-Class handles with all the prowess of a newly born giraffe. The entry level car has comfort suspension and this sport model takes that and lowers it slightly. And what that means is you get improved agility and handling, but really for no loss in comfort. And I reckon this is the best model to have. You can get the car in a sportier AMG line specification, but its stiffer suspension isn't as comfortable. And while the C-Class is available with air suspension for the first time, the system isn't quite as good as it is on the larger S-Class. And that brings us on to the C-Class's downsides. Now, before I start my usual rant, I should point out that they are few and far between. And when I mention other cars, it's because they're just slightly better in certain areas, such as we're on a twisty road now, and while this C-Class handles well, it just doesn't feel quite as involving to drive as a BMW 3 Series. So if your commute involves some twisty roads, you might prefer the 3 Series than this car. Then there's Mercedes four-cylinder 2.1-litre diesel engine, which is the mainstay of the range. Yes, it's punchy and can do 70 miles per gallon, but it's just a bit noisy compared to the quieter and smoother four-cylinder diesel you get in the Audi A4. 
So I've spent about a week with this car, and during that time, I've discovered a few idiosyncrasies. For instance, I really like the way you control the infotainment system with this swivel wheel and touchpad, which is standard across the range. It's just that I think this touchpad does get slightly in the way of the swivel wheel, and I kind of wish Mercedes had put the direct navigation buttons rather up there on the dash. With the swivel wheel, it just makes more sense. And then there's the seating position. Now, the seats, they are very comfortable, but as with other Mercedes, the steering wheel here in a right-hand drive car is slightly offset to the left, so you do feel ever so slightly twisted behind the wheel. Another problem with the C-Class is space in the back. Now, this front seat is in my usual driving position, and knee room, it's actually very good. The problem, as you can probably guess already, is with headroom. So I'm 5'11", and my head is touching the roof there. To be fair, this sunroof does eat into headspace a bit, but that sloping roof line does mean that people over six foot are gonna struggle back here. And then there's the transmission tunnel. It's like this on all these compact executive cars. But the problem is with the C-Class in particular, if you sit somewhere in the middle seat, their feet will go either side. And if I just, you know, I'm doing this to just show you, I'm gonna take off my shoe. The footwells are very small. So as you can see, it's a bit cramped to have three feet per foot well and you have to excuse the white socks i wasn't expecting to have to take my shoes off and while i'm being hypercritical i should also point out that while the boot is the same good size as you get with the bmw 3 series its opening isn't quite as large so it's slightly less practical also on the entry level model you'll have to pay 995 pounds for an option pack if you want fold down rear seats whereas they're standard higher up the range Finally, there's the fact that the C-Class is just that little bit more expensive than its rivals, but that doesn't matter too much because it'll be worth more than them when you eventually come to sell it on and when you take into account its low running costs, its desirable image, and the fact that it's very relaxing to drive and it's packed full of technology, it's a very compelling choice. But if you're considering this car, you should also check out our reviews of its main rivals, the BMW 3 Series by clicking up here, the Audi A4, which you can watch our review of by clicking down there, click down here you can watch our very latest video review and if you click up there on our logo you can subscribe to our youtube channel